it's a working. It's the first time to use that new connection method from OBS. Nice job, YouTube and OBS. Pretty painless. <clears throat> All right, so this is a wood shedding live stream here. Just recently competed at Winfield and did okay, but not nearly as well as I hoped I would. Uh, and found plenty of things that I needed to work on. And I also found that once I didn't have the contest looming over my head, I was a lot less organized with how I practiced. So I came up with a schedule for myself, specific things to practice. Uh, my goals that I'm working on right now are uh, picking speed and accuracy, as always, and uh, reviewing specific repertoire items. And for today, it's going to be Salt Creek, Squirrel Hunters, Turkey in the Straw, and then whatever else we have time to get to. I'm going to be streaming for about an hour and a half. Now, I uh, have noticed that as I get older, I need a warm-up more and more. This is what I've been doing to warm up lately. I use this app called Tempo Advance. I did a uh, lesson with Chris Eldridge, and he told me about this app. I believe it's on Android and iPhone. And it lets you do normal metronome things, and it also lets you set a rate of tempo change. So what I do is I'll start playing rhythm at a speed that's real comfortable and easy for me and slowly ramp it up to a speed that's more brisk and that kind of loosens up my wrist and, wrist and gets me ready to play. And then uh, once I get up to the top speed, I'll park it there and just play for a little bit at the top speed. What I usually do is just play through the, that same rhythm a few more times. And then I'll take one of the songs that people usually play really fast at jams and uh, play through that at that fast tempo. Understanding that I'll probably, I'm going to make some mistakes and that's okay. So hopefully you can hear this metronome okay. Here we go. We're going to start at 170 beats per minute. That's a pretty comfortable rhythm tempo for me. Maybe even slightly slow feeling. And then... Uh, I'll ramp it up to, I believe our target today is 260 beats a minute, and then we'll park it at 260, and uh, strum a little more, and then go through Salt Creek. The chords are on the uh, screen there if you want to play along. Main thing is, uh, if it gets too fast, just go back to the regular boom chuck. And if you pick along and it feels too fast, then just play quarter notes or whatever feels comfortable, but the main thing to remember is stay relaxed. It's very easy to chase after speed and give yourself a lot of wrist tension and some tendonitis, and I've done it before. So when you're doing speed work, more important than accuracy, more important than sounding good, is staying relaxed. Here we go. Salt Creek, 170 to 260 rhythm ramp.
up to 260 beats a minute. I'm going to park the metronome there. And then uh, we'll strum through that maybe a couple more times. And then play the melody. It's fine to be sloppy on the melody. This is a, this is a real fast tempo if you're not used to uh, picking here, which it doesn't happen that, that often at jams. Usually it's more around 180 to 200 beats per minute at most jams I've gone to. Let's see, there it is. Let's see, copy, Dropbox link, paste. You fell off at 200? Yeah, it, it doesn't take long to get to where you can, uh, you can at least boom chuck up to 240. If you just do that, uh, if you get that tempo advance, and you do that strum at just kind of as your warm up each day, pretty quickly you'll get to where you can get to 240, 250, 260, at least doing this. Maybe not throwing upstrokes in there and maybe not hitting complicated bass patterns, but uh, those will come too once you get to where you can downstroke at that. It's just kind of a repetition thing and it doesn't really take that long, a month or two, and you'll be flying through those tempos. So uh, so there's the link for the melody that we're going to be playing, or at least kind of the basic melody. I'll be improvising around this melody. The basic melody is... And then the second half... Salt Creek, and I'll be probably abbreviating some of that. You can take a few notes out and still get the idea across when you're playing at a real fast tempo. So here we go. Strum it a couple times and then just run through the melody uh, about five times at that tempo. And then we'll move on to the next thing.
Promise. That was pretty sloppy at that tempo. This is my first day to uh, boost it up to 260 for that tune. But right hand stayed relaxed, so that's good. Chakra Star says, wish I could practice more. I live to pick. Well, yeah. Yeah, bust out that guitar. I'm going to try to do this pretty often. Probably about 8 to 9.30 Eastern Time. Most nights that I don't have something else going on. Because, like I said earlier, I was fun in my... My practice was not very constructive, so it was better to come up with a plan and try to practice things that would help me get better, help me uh, work on the things I'm not good at instead of just picking the things that I am good at over and over again. Okay, uh, here's a link for the next thing we're working on. This is pretty challenging, but not nearly as fast. These are exercises, uh, if you guys are familiar with Chris Thiele. I heard about these from him. These aren't, this is not a tab that he wrote or anything, but it's just the idea of what he learned from John Moore, who was a mandolin player for the band California, and uh, Berline, Crary, Hickman, and Moore. He's the guy that taught Chris Thiele of Nickel Creek fame, mandolin. And he used picking patterns like this to help uh, train pick accuracy. So we're going to go nice and slow for these. Uh, I'm just going to leave the capo on for now. So this whole thing, uh, it's all just open string patterns with a metronome. And you keep a strict down, up, down, up, down, up. So on every click, you're playing a downstroke. In between clicks, you're playing an upstroke. Regardless of what string you're hitting or how you're moving between strings, you just keep that down-up pattern going. And that'll help you keep the rhythm when you're playing uh, stuff that's faster. You can get away with mixing up your pick strokes at lower tempers, tempos, but once you get faster, you'll pretty much have to keep that kind of metronomic right hand. Excuse me. Fizzy water making me burp. All right. Uh... So, what we're going to do, each of these is two measures. We'll play it, each of them twice and then move on to the next one. I'm going to go through the whole page of exercises five times in total. Here we go with number uh, exercise A, starting on the D and the G string. One, two, ready, go. <laughs>
second playthrough complete. Here we go with number three. One, two, three, four. <laughs> the fourth uh so last one one two ready go <laughs> the John Moore exercises. Oh, I can hide this thing for now. Actually, no. What I need to do is change this thing, because we're about to play Squirrel Hunters. So the next thing I'm going to work on is a specific arrangement of the tune Squirrel Hunters. Uh, this is the one that I started learning for the contest I just played in. I didn't have it down as well as I would have liked before contest time happened.
It went okay, but not great. It's a pretty cool tune. It's in the key of D, although you wouldn't think that it was. When you see the chords, it looks like it barely hits a D, just briefly at the end of each phrase. But when you look at the melody, it's got two sharps, key of D. Uh, there are different ways that people play rhythm on this. Sometimes they will have G's in the place of the E minors that are shown in there. Oops. There we go. Let's see if that worked. There we go. There's the tab for Squirrel Hunters. So I'm going to play this. Uh, Relatively free time, no metronome. For the intro, and then it kind of uh, breaks into a rhythm for the rest of the song. Pulling up my copy here so I can see the same thing you guys are. I have it pretty much memorized, but there's little, little variations to it that I'll miss if I'm not looking at the page for now. So, not shown on the tablature, there's a intro that repeats basically this phrase. So like the first chord structure of the A part, but instead of just an E minor, I use an E minor 9. Kind of the uh, I'll be watching you chord. And uh, riff off of that.
right, so that's the arrangement. Uh, I'm gonna play it through four more times through that full arrangement, and then uh, we'll move into a little more rhythm practice and recording as we do the rhythm practice. And I'm sorry about, I don't know if you hear that, there's a little rattle. The string ends on this set seem to be a little loose. I'm probably gonna have to throw a new string set on early just to get rid of that annoying rattle. Hard parts of that song are that last B part that probably be easy if I did sweep picking. But I'm stubborn and I keep trying to alternate pick it. So you got a five string and then a four string pattern and then a three string pattern. So that's tough. All right, that was second pass. Here comes number three.
I was reading about this song. It's a Civil War era fiddle tune, apparently. Uh, and the name Squirrel Hunters came from uh, some people who were pressed into service kind of suddenly and they weren't well armed and they just took their squirrel guns to war with them. And uh, yeah, that's kind of like fits the mood in the song. To me, it's like sounds kind of haunting and sounds like hardship and privation. And, fits with the melody well. So I kind of like think about that when I get to that third section, that kind of like the furious battle part of the song, and then kind of the, the denouement with the, sorry. And then finally, you're back at home after the war and sound of the wind chimes kind of remind you of uh, stuff that happened. That's what I have in mind while I play this tune. Let's see, that was the third pass, right? Two more to go. pass of this and then we're on to the next thing. Squirrel Hunters, one more time.
That was five th run throughs of that arrangement of squirrel hunters. Uh, oh man, this is bad news. Two is record rhythm tracks of squirrel hunters. If you guys were picking this, this one maybe won't be so painful, but if you were strumming along, this is going to be even more of the same, so sorry for that. Uh, I have four tempos to do tonight. I'm going to do 130, 135, 140, and 145. Fortunately, I set myself up for success, and I already set up, I recorded a E minor, a G, an A, and a D chop, and assign them to a sampler. So it just plays that wave file, so I don't have to re-record the mandolin all over and over again. Cut my work in half there. So that's kind of nice. I'm going to turn the drums down a little bit. They were touch loud last time I was recording. We, have, we are armed. Let's see how our levels are. Looks pretty good, right around minus six. Here we go.
Okay, that sounded good enough to me for practicing along with. Oh, I just realized uh, you guys can't see what I was doing there. There we go, that's what's going on. There's the digital audio workstation that I'm recording in, Reaper. It's a great one. All right, I'm gonna render this and then move to the next tempo. Just trimming the noise of me turning off the recorder from the end here. And then I'll do a little fade out. And then I am going to turn that thing down because the render noise is gonna be really bad for you. It sounds pretty rough. All right, so that was 130 beats per minute. Thing. Here comes number two out of four. Squirrel Hunters. Recording rhythm guitar. Here we go. Oh, I'm going to put the drums back on for timekeeping.
watch. I hear it ticking in the microphone there. <laughs> okay, that was number two of four. Rhythm guitar. We're going to raise the tempo. We're going to render before we do that. What's going on here? the drums, render, this is 135 beats per minute, alright, play something else while that's rendering. the guitar volume before I rendered. Uh, yeah. All right, I think that's enough of the recording for now. Let's move on to the next thing. Close and save. What is the next thing? Next thing on the list is Turkey in the Straw. So I'm going to put some chords up there for it, and I'll put a link to a tab. Let's see. Pretty easy chords on Turkey and the Straw. Well, they didn't line up just great in the window there. Looks a little, little better. Close enough. All right. Uh, here's a version that I haven't played very much. I wrote it for a student a while ago. It's got a couple of oddities in it. There's some techniques in there that are included kind of just for their own sake. I wouldn't necessarily usually use the techniques in the in a performance of this song. Nice, all right, Slim. Uh, so if you look at measure 11. Ah. That was kind of just to get the student in the habit of uh, using slides to get a favorable position for playing a part. Same thing with the next one. Now the slide measure 16, that is something I would usually use probably. Maybe just because I played a lot of rock and blues before I started playing, playing bluegrass, but I like that uh, second to third slide because it gets that minor third in there for that little bit of color and bluesiness. All right, Slim, 
Glad that you're joining us. Glad that you're picking uh, along with us. We're about to do Turkey in the Straw. We're going to do five passes at 165 beats per minute. And uh, we'll use a backing track for this. And then after that, if you got something uh, that you want to play, let me know. I'll see if I have a backing track for it, or we'll just fire up the metronome and pick it together. So let's see. We're doing 165 beats a minute. And let me make sure you guys will be able to hear the backing track. Let me know if it's too loud or too soft or anything, and uh, we can adjust. But here we go. One, two, three. passes there. I'm going to go for five total at that uh, tempo, and then next time I practice I'll kick it up, I think. Is it next? Maybe... No, sorry. I'm going to do two practices at 165 and then try kicking it up. I'm trying to find like the right uh, ramp rate to play a song clean, kick it up a notch, and uh, still be able to play it relatively clean, you know? You know what I mean? That's the question. Okay, uh, I am going to turn the backing track up a little. It sounded a little soft to me on that one, so... If that gets to be too much, let me know. Here we go. Third and fourth pass. One, two, three, four. <laughs>
starting to slip on that one. I was taking liberties with the arrangement and then totally, uh, totally spaced at the end there. So one more pass and then uh, the rhythm track will play an extra pass at the end. So we'll just improv that last one. Just play, just play whatever, whatever fits over the chords. Here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> passes plus a bonus pass on turkey and straw at 165 beats per minute that completes the planned practice that i had for today if there's something else you guys want to play just let me know what it is and uh we'll jump into it if i know it if we don't i'll try to look it up i guess there's a little bit of lag between uh me playing and it arriving on the stream so Let's do a little, <clears throat> you guys want something speedy or something leisurely? up a, a little bit in the tempo just to finish off with some a little bit of speed work we'll do big mon around 220. It's a little too soft to hear. Let me turn it up some. Fire that off again. Two, 
Two, four. chat here we got a whiskey before breakfast that's a good idea you have a uh, tempo range in mind Thorin let's see I think I might try it with no capo I kind of go back and forth on the capo no capo thing pretty sure Norman did it with a capo but mm. an East Tennessee blues Ooh, that's a burner there let's see did Tony Rice take a break on that one? I remember. I remember there was some guitar re recording of East Tennessee Blues. Maybe I'm thinking of Seldom Scene. I don't think they had a guitar break in theirs. Who's the good guys to listen to for guitar on East Tennessee Blues, Slim? Because I haven't learned that one yet. But fast or slow? Okay. Let's split the difference. Uh, let's try. Somewhere around 200-ish. Hadn't played this in a while. I might just uh, stumble all over this. But let's see what happens. Two, three... <laughs>
Uh -oh. Got text coming in here. Let's see. Okay. Good dock version out there. Okay, I'll look that one up. Let's see. Let's see if I can find something there. Ooh, you know what? Somewhere in here I have the uh, Flat Pick Guitar Magazine stuff that I bought from that website. They probably have an East Tennessee Blues in there. <clears throat> Got a Robert Bolin arrangement, volume 11, issue 4. Let's see what he does with it. And what page was it? 74. Sorry, my mouse is noisy. Oh, I'm thinking of the one that's like... That's just Tennessee blues, not East Tennessee blues. That's the one I'm thinking of. Okay, this is the more swingy one, huh? stays the same throughout, right? Yeah. tracks for that one soon. Something to play along with. But in the meantime, I'm going to set the uh, set the metronome to a nice kind of middle of the road. And then I'll, I'll play rhythm while you pick. And then uh, I'll try to pick with just the metronome. See how it goes. What? Uh, let me make it where I can see the whole thing at once. I think the chord pattern's the same th throughout, right? C, uh, C, D7, G, C. Okay. One, two, three, four.
Ah, slim. Thanks. I'm gonna have to learn this one. I've heard it uh, plenty of times as soon as I started playing off of that. I'm like, oh, yes, yes. I remember this tune. It's a good one. All right, 9.30, 9.34. Uh, let's take it out with one final tune. And call it a night. And uh, I think tomorrow night I'm jamming with my friends. We're going to be jamming around 7. I might stream it if they're amenable, but they probably won't be. And I don't blame them. You know, not everybody wants to jam in front of a camera. That's fine. So it might be a uh, Wednesday night before I'm back on practicing again. Uh, let's see. Let's see what I got a good track we can play along with. Let's do uh, Bill Cheatham, huh? Here we go. Bill Cheatham, key of A. <laughs> guys it was a pleasure picking with you hopefully i'll see you again soon probably wednesday night will be the next time that i'll be on here practicing I'll see you then